Yeah, so I woke up to something unsettling uh, this morning. The Crow remake finally got a trailer. Yeah, I didn't like it. Like, I didn't... <laughs> Certain avenues that they went down that I'm just not okay with. I didn't grow up with The Crow. Not not really. Like, I, I definitely known of it. I hadn't watched it until, like, the past couple of years. But then I watched it and I was like, oh, okay, I fell in love with it. And I understood why other people fell in love with it. The aesthetic is great. The soundtrack is great. The acting is great, especially from Brandon Lee, of course. It's great. It's a good movie. And it's pure 90s, but in a good way. Some movies and shit just last forever from the 90s. And it, The Crow is one of them. Yeah, we're going to take a big, a little peek at this again. I woke up, watched it. I watched it on Twitter and it was really dark. I had just woken up. I was groggy. So I was like, oh, yeah, that's, not, that's not that bad. And then I got up completely. Then I watched it again. And I was like, that's bad. <laughs> that's, that's, that's shit. That's not good. I was deceived by sleep. And then now we're here do, making a full video because I got, oof, this, I, I have opinions. <laughs> and already that crow just sticks out. I don't know why. <laughs> like, uh, it's a crow, it's a bird. It's just a bird. Why does it look so bleh? <laughs> What's the first thing you liked about me? I thought that you were quite brilliantly broken. You need subtitles for these characters. They're the, like the disaffected, mumbly, like <laughs> like everybody's Robert Pattinson now. I thought that you were quite brilliantly broken. Oh no. <laughs> so I thought that you were brilliantly broken. That is so Tumblr. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you know what? Let me shrink myself because I'm kind of blocking. I could be like block the dialogue. I want you guys to see how garbage this is. You feel like my person. What? What? <laughs> you feel like my person. All right, all right, look, 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 look. That's what was great about the crows. They weren't afraid to be romantic with the, you know, Shelly and Eric. And it was, it, it, but it wasn't corny. It, they didn't lift their dialogue from whatever the fuck middle-aged wine moms were watching at the time because that's that's some straight Grey's Anatomy shit. <laughs> You're my person? Ooh, ooh, brother, ooh. <laughs> that's, that's disgusting. Like it's supposed to be like traditionally romantic, not cringe Chandra Rhymes romantic. Okay, so now we know that Eric Draven watches Grey's Anatomy with his girlfriend while they're, you know, stenciling their fucking tattoos in the kitchen. <laughs> you feel like my pus. Oh, uh, she repeats it. Ugh. The dialogue was a little difficult to pick up the first two times I watched the trailer. Now that I'm actually like getting confirmation that these, this is the dialogue. Oh God. Oh, bruh. And the, <laughs> them fake ass Versace boxers. <laughs> this is every person you don't like in like two people. What's the worst thing you've ever done? Start in this movie. <laughs> Things. What the fuck is this? <laughs> what, is, what is he doing to her? You see, this is what happens. This is what happens when you don't care about style. It ends up looking like the villain is fingering a girl to death. <laughs> oh, I'm already like tearing up because I'm laughing at how bad this is. Danny Houston, good choice for a villain. And but, like, why does he have supernatural powers? I haven't read the graphic novel, so I don't know if that's a thing, if a villain had supernatural powers. But uh, <laughs> this individual has connections to Shelly's past. Rogue is imbued with supernatural abilities that allow him to trade innocent souls in exchange for an extended lifespan here on Earth. <laughs> Shelly witnesses his agenda. He sends his thugs to kill her and anyone who can compromise his position of power. Oh, uh, you see, this is where it is. <laughs> I know like it feels like nitpicks, doesn't it? But I don't think it is. This is what, like, these are those bags you get at the grocery store in the vegetable aisle. <laughs> those flimsy cheap bags. Your hands are free. Rip it open. It's those fucking vegetable bags. In the original, the death scene was brutal and it wasn't preventable. <laughs> Let's just say that. Okay, they held him down by the neck. But like right here, she could have clawed through that bag. They only got one bag. Unless, wait, is that another bag? Well, at least they brought extra bags. <laughs> in case. Also, um, does he have a mullet? He's got like the scuzzy white boy mullet. 
Oh no. I thought he just had like a white boy fade. It's a mullet. Jesus Christ. There's so there's so many wrong moves. Nice choice of music. Go in the classic rock angle, that makes sense. The Crow is known for rock music. He's like this, a point. When someone dies, a crow carries their soul to the land of the dead. Wait, is this the land of the dead? So the land of the dead is just basically New York when it's, when it's raining, when it's foggy outside. Lame. I love how he goes to the underworld in his Zoomer gear. <laughs> Oh boy. It seems to show how Eric becomes the crow, you know, comes back to life. And it's, um, I don't want to see that. Why are we seeing that? It's, it's better when it's ambiguous. Um, pro who knows? He probably heals over, but like he gets shot, blood splatter, but I don't see any blood on him. I don't see any blood splatter on him. Like, look at that. There's no blood on him. <laughs> there's, wait, so there's blood splatter outward and on the wall, which looks like bad CGI blood if you really look at it, but there's none on him. That's shitty. What the fuck? He's got blood in his mouth, on his head. He got shot point blank in the chest with a shotgun. Where's the blood? <laughs> One of the more interesting aspects of the movie versus the previous films is that Eric doesn't suddenly have the confidence and physical prowess to take his revenge easily. This one is very messy. He suffers from brutal physical damage along the way. His healing abilities are much slower and he definitely feels pain with every attack. Uh, what's the point of that? Like he feels more pain and then he, he heals slower. It feels like they're trying to make it more realistic while, while also taking away the realism. You can't be like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He, his healing ability isn't instantaneous like that little cartoony movie. No, he feels every bullet the villain claims souls and for the devil so he can live longer. Like, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> whatever. I remember like the original, his, awakening was just so dramatic and atmospheric and memorable like him like jumping through the window and him putting on the makeup and it, it was it's good it's good but here he's like oh i'll just i i was dead and then i woke up i get shot in the chest with no blood <laughs> Why the Billie eilish blood eyes really but you're running out of time to save her oh wait a minute wait a minute oh. <laughs> That was a great pause. <laughs> that was a great pause. Okay, so he has a hole in his chest here, but where was the blood? And it seems like, wait, why does it seem like the effect slowly appears on his chest? Is that just me? What the fuck? I don't know if that's me or what. Wait, hold on, let me put my glasses on. Further examination? No, I don't think it's me. I think, look. I think it just appeared, like, yeah, that's an effect, that's a CGI effect and it just, I think it just fades in sloppily. Ew. Ew. Brother, ew. <laughs> but you're running out of time to save her. And like running out of time to save her, what does that mean? She's supposed to be dead. Shelly's dead. So what do we, what is all this talk of saving her? From what? She dead. She ain't coming back. Save from what? The Guardian then sets Eric on a path to putting the wrong things right by means of vengeance in order to rescue Shelly's soul from hell. So that's what they meant. He's got to rescue her soul from hell. How about, no, how about you just let her go to hell? <laughs> how about you just let her pay for her earthly crimes? How are you just gonna save somebody from hell without them repenting for what they've done? This is why you, like, not, like now we own some Constantine shit. <laughs> what? Let's rewind that. There's like, just so much shit. Oh, that CGI blood. Ooh, it's so shit. And if you like really look at it, it looks so sloppy. <laughs> oh, I just wanna look at that hole in his chest again. Oh, that still looks, inc look how bad that look. looks incredibly fake. He has a, like a cherry fruit gusher <laughs> on his chest. What? Ooh, ew, it doesn't even react with the, like the lighting. <laughs> The more I look at this, like the more shitty it gets. I'm gonna kill them. Every single one of them. I'm gonna kill them. Every single one of them. Remember when Eric Draven sounded really eloquent? When he said things, you could understand them. Remember that? Guess we're not getting that because we've 
based Eric Draven around current culture. We base him around a SoundCloud rapper. So now he has to, he has to mumble everything he says. I killed you. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Wait a minute. I killed you. Yeah, you did. That that energy. <laughs> That's that. Ooh. <laughs> I killed you. Yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think there is a scene from the original Crow that mirrors this. I know you. I know you. I knew I knew you. I knew I knew you. But you ain't you. You can't be you. We put you through the window. There ain't no coming back. I killed you. Yeah, you did. What's that? What the fuck is that car? What car is that? Is that some Elon Musk constructed monstrosity? Okay, so once again, we have villains who are basically just rich white people. <laughs> like in the original, they were very um eclectic street thugs. And it like the, the first movie was actually surprising. Well, not surprisingly, because a lot of movies were very diverse back in the day. And it seems like they've become less diverse as time has gone on. You had Brandon Lee, who was of course half Chinese. I think Tony Todd was in that shit. The villain had like a Japanese girlfriend. There was a lot of different races in the first Crow film. And now we, yeah, we just got a bunch of like, Euro trash white people as villains. <laughs> Not soon after, we are introduced to the antagonist, a powerful business magnate known as Mr. Rogue, who's played by Danny Houston. Of course, he, like I said, I knew he would be just a generic fucking evil white businessman. I was hoping maybe if I got these details, like, oh, maybe he's like a drug dealer or something. And he's just like, he's just swagged out. No, no, just a businessman, a, a, a corporate creepo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we've had that a lot, like Die Hard. We had some Euro trash villains. But the crow should be street level. And we know this. They did the same thing with the Punisher, where like both seasons were just like generic white rich villains. Knowing damn well the Punisher is all about the street crime. Whether it be upper management street crime or lower management, like that's usually where it is. Like Hollywood is trying really, really hard to stay away from street crime. Very hard. Where, where's like the spirited black dude with, with the blades and shit? Like, <laughs> I'm sorry, but these villains look boring. And, but I, I mean, I like Danny Houston and all, but they're good actors in here, but I think the material is going to hold them back. He came for us. He came for us. Oh my God, you did not give this motherfucker a samurai sword. <laughs> Ooh, that is so lame. <laughs> he looks like a cringe SoundCloud rapper. He looks like he's terminally online. He looks like Pete Davidson. He's got some Pete Davidson swag. And then they gave him, what, what the fuck is that? A bayonet or what? A fucking samurai, it's either a bayonet or a samurai sword. Either way, that's cringe. Oh Jesus. <laughs> I remember seeing the concept art for when they wanted Bradley Cooper to be the crow. I think they di they dipped into that. Everything looks so fucking generic. It just, yeah. Like the original had this goth, gritty, industrial, dark look. And it was so, you. it, it was, it was so, it was, it was good. <laughs> and here it just looks like, oh, this is the next Taken movie. Anger. It's not anger. It's love. Oh, thank you for telling us that. Thank you for reminding us of, <laughs> We didn't, cause we didn't know otherwise. Look at what you've become. What the hell? Oh, hang on. Oh, that looks bad. I slashed your neck, but it looks like I'm slashing your forehead. <laughs> Look at that. His no, it actually goes up to his nose. Yeah, it hits his nose. It didn't hit his fucking neck. That's nowhere near his neck. See, people think, oh, well, if it's fast paced, it must be good action. Eh. Now, it's not like the worst I've ever seen, but it's not that good. It's not as good as people were making it out to be. People are like, well, somebody, you know, the action, somebody action looks good. It looks good. No, it doesn't. The fact that he has a sword, I just hate it. I just hate it. Like I said, he looks like a school shooter. That's why it's so unappealing. And who the fuck did he shoot at? Ooh, wow, that's bad. Look at, like, wait, 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 wait. He shoots at the guy shooting at him, but he shoots at him right there. Boom, because you see a little blood splatter right there, but the dude shooting, don't move, he don't move. <laughs> this looks like a game level also, by the way. I feel like I've seen this stage in something, I don't know. But he shoots that dude right there and he don't move. He has no reaction to being shot. Look at that, that is so shitty. That is so shitty. 
out he looks like a SoundCloud rapper. That is not cool. I'm fine with the crow having tattoos. That's cool. Cause the Gothic aura and tattoos are like peanut butter and jelly, whatever. My, my problem is, is that his tattoos are garbage. Like I said, it's the Pete Davidson swag and other people have said like Joker from Suicide Squad, but I, it's more Pete Davidson. You have no idea what hell awaits you. That's fine. That's cool. It would have been even more metal if he shot him by like putting the gun in his mouth. But that, yeah, that's fine. No, I do. Uh, oh, oof, your Pennywise came out right there. Oh, I do. <laughs> I do. I do. Oh, it looks like he gets hit by a truck right here. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, and he throws severed heads to the his, the hoity-toity rich audience. That's funny. Like, oh, you're so edgy. We're so much edgier than the first movie. Ooh, so edgy. I feel like there's gonna be like some anti-rich messaging in here. That seems really blatant right there. Like I said, this rich white people villain, this shit is boring as hell now. I think we need to like diversify. And I don't like the fact that he doesn't wear the white makeup. <laughs> Returning to the character design he shared, for the majority of the film, Eric doesn't have the traditional look of the crow either. He doesn't full tra fully transform into the undead Avenger until the final act. They're doing that shit. So we're doing that. We're doing that. So you're telling me they're trying to do like a franchise thing? So Eric Draven is going to be like an Avenger for multiple films. Even though I think in the, in the original, by the time he gets his revenge, after he writes the wrongs, uh, he dies and his soul is put to rest because yeah, his work is done. So why is he becoming a full fledged crow by the end of the film? Huh? Like I said, this is this is some Constantine shit. We're doing some Constantine shit. No, 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 not like Constantine really. It's more like, yeah, like Spawn. It's like Spawn, what are you doing? Oh, they could have done it like this. He would be really pale because you know, he's dead. So then he'd be really white and just put on the black makeup over that. So he would have this, the appearance of Brandon Lee in the first one. Then you could cut out the white makeup thing. But now they're just like, no, just be a douchey current year white rapper that's alive with color in your cheeks with black makeup on and a school shooter jacket. I never be alone. Oh, I love how they sneakily make the music worse and worse as the trailer goes on. I don't wanna be alone. It fucking auto-tune bullshit. Oh, ew. Oh, I just noticed that. Started out as a skull and then it, Turn into the a crow. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, you still got badly auto-tuned fucking trap bullshit over it. I don't give a fuck. It's not good. <laughs> it's just not good. Blech. I found some further details just to elaborate us on what we're in for. Now, apparently, um, Mr. H on YouTube released like this spoiler video, like filled with leaks that he got from some contact that he had. The video is unfortunately gone because naturally it would be. The studio forced him to delete it. But luckily someone from a website called That Dark Place or whatever detailed most of what he said in the video anyway. So we'll be able to read it for ourselves. Gotta love the fucking internet, man. Who's ready to be pissed off? <laughs> this is a very different interpretation of James O. Barr's graphic novel. It's only the very basic premise and a few characters carried over into this brand new story, which I think is going to annoy a few people. <laughs> I'm already annoyed, nigga. I'm already annoyed. The fact that it is even remade annoys me. He went on to detail that his source said that the film is one of the better ones in the franchise, but it does lack the energy and style of the 1994 original. All re well, see, then it's not really any better than the other sequels, is it? Well, except for maybe the second one. I, re I remember that being, trying to do its own thing. I, know, I gotta rewatch these f fucking movies. It's been so long. So the movie itself is very, very uh, slow in pace with a tone reminiscent of a gritty noir thrillers like Drive and the girl with the dragon tattoo rather than the very gothic rain swept fantasy world of Tim Burton's Batman. Why are you bringing Tim Burton's Batman into this? <laughs> so the very best thing about the mo this movie is the incredible and committed performance by Bill Skarsgård because he's the lead who is seen sporting a cropped mullet, interesting and full body tattoos. Yeah, we saw that. Trash. So the film opens with our protagonist, Eric Draven, fighting to get clean in a rehab facility. It's here that he meets Shelly, a beautiful new resident with her own dark past. So they're both junkies. Mother is the name for God on the lips and hearts of all children. Morphine is bad for you. Your daughter is out there on the streets waiting for you. It's sounding great. The two quickly become infatuated with each other and eventually break out of the facility together, running off into a nameless city, ready to take the world head on. So it's building that love story. In the original, we didn't need all that shit. 
We didn't need all that extra shit. The first act of the movie focuses on their budding romance. They live fast and they play hard, enjoying recreational drugs, making love and professing their newfound affection for each other. Great. I can't wait to see scenes of them smoking blunts and just talking about bro. What if you put pizza on chicken? <laughs> I can't wait for I can't wait for that shit. And also interestingly, he doesn't have the crow as a constant companion, even though he's flying around with him throughout the whole trailer. There are multiple birds seen throughout the movie in the background, but they don't necessarily guide him in his mission. He has to figure out how to track down his killers on his own. Okay. So they don't do shit. They just fly around. They don't guide him, provide like like subtle counsel or anything, or watch over him. They're just flying around. The film is extremely violent. I'm so annoyed right now. The film is extremely violent, though there's a lack of personality from the villains. Of course, of course. They're mostly interchangeable thugs and it robs the chaos of any emotional impact. So they are mostly meat for the grinder. Great, fa fabulous, fantastic. That's exactly what I wanted from a Crow movie for characters to not have personality. There's also very little action with only one memorable set piece. Wow, very little action with only one memorable set. Mm -mm, mm -mm. A spectacularly bloody showdown at an opera house that really delivers the necessary visceral thrills, which we saw in the trailer. Like if we saw, like basically saw everything, that's piss poor. The standout is Skarsgård. He is absolutely standout. He's not an action hero. He's vulnerable, he's emotional. There's a real sense of trauma about him and even fear that we see in Eric when he realizes what's happening to him. And when he's finally ready to unleash hell on his enemies, it feels earned. There's no doubt that he was the absolute top choice to play this character. Danny Houston is appropriately menacing as the villain, though he's never quite as compelling or as interesting as Michael Wincott's top dollar in the original. I mean, he figures when you cast him as this generic white rich dude who like bad people rich like yeah that's that shit's so tired now so the movie overall isn't bad but it doesn't have the same emotional impact as the 1994 film and sadly my source doesn't see it becoming as iconic duh <laughs> but, but they will give it credit daring to be bold and different it, it doesn't look bold and different though does that anything in that trailer look bold and different it did not it looked like any other fucking action film. They swing for the fences here and mostly works aside from a slow pace, not as much action as you like, but apparently it does all pretty much land for the most part. We'll see how much that opinion lasts when it actually comes out. It has that same teal and orange coloring, like the wide shots, the music doesn't, I feel like the music is not gonna be any good. Like the whole thing about The Crow was, yeah, the tone, visuals, music. There's nothing that seems atmospheric. Here, this is safe as fuck. This is a safe reboot from the cinematography down to the villains. It's all just safe. There's a little bit more we're gonna read. It's very interesting. Skarsgård had this to say about his role in the film. I was a huge fan of the original growing up as a kid and was so honored to take on the role of Eric Draven. But what really drew me to it was what Rupert Sanders wanted to do with it. He wanted to completely reimagine the story and the character and tailor it towards a modern audience. <laughs> Oh, we're fucked guys, we're fucked. As soon as this sentence is uttered, it's over. It's over. I mean, they already got the motherfucker looking like a SoundCloud rapper, it's over. It's a character that I know many revere and have a strong connection to. He's unlike any I've ever taken on before. Working with the remarkably talented FKA Twigs was magical. I felt a responsibility to Eric's story and in never to stay true to the spirit of the source material. I can't wait for the world to see the film and I hope it resonates with audiences as strongly as it did with those of them. This feels like a PR statement. This doesn't even feel genuine. As soon as he said, like, tailor it towards a modern audience, I was like, yeah, this is, of course I'm gonna see it and give it a fair shake. Who knows, it could be better than I think it is, but it probably isn't. <laughs> like, I see a lot of people trying to be nice to this to this trailer. Like, I don't know, man, those down votes, <laughs> Cause there's a lot of like hardcore pro fans because of Brandon Lee's death. People are really protective over this franchise, uh, which is totally understandable. And like, I can't wait. If they try to go the route of bad mouthing the fans because they didn't like it or because they trash it, that's gonna be a shit storm. That is gonna be a total shit storm. You can't, cause you can't say you're a racist if you don't like it. You can't say you're sexist if you don't like it. The first Crow had way more representation. It had a lot more going for it than this. Cause though they can't sling mud at Crow fans if they don't like it. Cause there's gonna be backlash, you know there is for this film. But I can't wait to see how the filmmakers and the studio is gonna handle it when people don't like it. But yeah, that's all I have to say about that. Bye guys, see you later.